Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started. Again, thank you so much for being here today. Really excited about this cafe. And for those of you who have come to the cafes before, you know what an enriching experience it can be and what great stories you hear. So really, really happy to have you all here. So as most of you know, since 2017, Nonviolent Peace Force has been working to protect civilians across Iraq, including inter internally displaced people, people fleeing violence and located in uh, tense areas, including near the Syrian and Turkish northern uh, borders of Northern Iraq. Um, I would, I'm really excited to meet for the first time as well and listen to two of my colleagues from Iraq, um, Nurhan Amir and Yonas Kal Kalhaf Hassan. They are both protection officers from Iraq who are working to build peace and working side by side with local organizations to, to do that, to increase safety and uh, to build capacity. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to um, my colleagues and uh, again, welcome. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, so sorry, um, just internet um, is not the best right now. Um, and I see my name is now Eunice, but it's not. Um, here it is. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Um, hope you're having a great day. I'm very happy and very excited to be here um, to share the work of MP Iraq for the first time. Uh, my name is Nurhana Aymer. I'm an international protection officer with MP Iraq, and I've been working with MP since 2022. Um, thank you, Nurhan. And uh, also, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Yunus Khalaf Hassan. Uh, I am a senior national protection officer. Uh, working in South Mosul team, uh, Nineveh Governorate in Iraq, and I have joined uh, MP since uh, 2020. So um, be, uh, we would like to uh, express our happiness to have this opportunity um, to share with you the work of MP in Iraq. But before we go ahead, um, let me talk a little bit about MP uh, Iraq. So nonviolence, uh, nonviolent peace force MP is a global civilian agency that utilizes the, the, the methodology of unarmed civilian protection, UCP. MP initiated uh, its operation in Iraq in 2017 with a primary aiming of protecting civilians fleeing uh, violence using the strategies of unarmed civilian protection, the UCP. MP is headquartered in Erbil, operates and operates in uh, across various locations in Nineveh uh, governorate, as you see in the map on the screen, including Baj, Sinjar, South Mosul, and Zumar. We were also operating in Jeddah 5 camp in South Mosul, uh, where a lot of ISIS families live in, but uh, the camp closed in about uh, five months ago. MP essentially uh, works on uh, social cohesion and peaceful coexistence um, in the operational uh, location to prevent and reduce violence and build uh, peace side by side with the local communities uh, using the UCP strategies. Yes, um, thank you, Eunice. And I would like to add regarding the different field sites that we do work in, just to give you a better understanding on how MP Iraq is operating. In each field site, the staff that are being employed are people from the community. So all the national staff in each different field site are people from the community, because they are the best to know about the context of the, the, the place. They already have a relationship with the community, with the community leaders, with the service actors, security actors. And this helps a lot in, in our programming. Also, I'd like to add regarding the international staff, such as me. We don't go to the field just on mission or just we go on visit and we head back to the headquarters in Erbil. Actually, each international staff, we live in our field site to engage with the community so they can get, so we can, as internationals, we can get to understand the context. We can get to understand the traditions and the culture of the community. And also it creates, um, and acceptance regarding the community. Because when we are trying to um, uh, introduce the concept of unarmed civilian protection, it does, it's not for them, it's not coming from outsiders. It's actually the staff who are people from their community. And it's 
internationals who are actually engaging with them, internationals who are living with them and trying to bond with them. And this uh, makes a huge difference. People trust us more, they feel, they feel safe around us more, and it helps us a lot in our program. And that's why we just wanted, before we get into sharing some stories about our work, we felt it was very important for you to just have a very brief, just a background about what is MP in Iraq and what is our work. And my colleague Eunice is gonna start sharing a story with you. Thank you. Thank you, Nurhan. Um, so I'm going to share with you a story uh, that uh, in our work uh, place in uh, South Mosul. So in uh, 2014, three Iraqi governorates in Northern and Western Iraq had been occupied by the armed group ISIS. And due to that, many people, including men, women, and children, were killed by uh, this armed group. And uh, this led to a lot of violence within the community and among the families affected by ISIS. Uh, after the recapture of these three uh, governorates by the Iraqi army at the end of 2016, MP began uh, working in South Mosul. Uh, in the camps of internal displayed persons, IDPs, and uh, also with uh, the host community. Uh, there was significant uh, resentment and hatred, uh, hatred between the community and the families of ISIS. This has affected the, the social cohesion and the coexistence, a uh, peaceful coexistence in, in the area, with women and children being the primary victims. During this time, MP built a very strong relationship and trust with the community because building relationships is an essential part and method of an armed civilian protection, the UCP. MP initiated UCP strategies through awareness, training, capacity strengthening, and the formation of community peace teams, um, including young women and men to be proactive and protect their community from violence in the long term. There was no acceptance of women and children of ISIS families in the community, as people encouraged abusing those families through social, uh, social, uh, social media and spread rumors that those children and women held uh, extremist beliefs and should not be allowed to interact with the community. In the meantime, MB, uh, MP formed a women peace team in Gayara sub-district in South Mosul, northern Iraq, and provided them with the conflict management uh, or conflict resolution training and UCP sessions. And MP uh, ensured that the women peace team, as you see in, 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 on the screen, on the photo, this is the photo of the women peace team. Um, MP ensured that uh, the women peace team was uh, diverse, including women from uh, ISIS-affiliated uh, uh, families, returnees, and women from the host community. Although the community expected that MP would not succeed uh, in forming a volunteer women uh, peace team due to the patriarchal society and customs and traditions that govern it, which restrict women's roles in the community, but MP, uh, succeeded in, in, in forming the team despite all the challenges and the difficulties. Of course, with the support of the community of Gayara, as they are generous, welcoming, and peace supportive people. Zainab is a 35 years old, was among the women peace team, and she was the wife of an ISIS member. In the first session, or the first awareness session, there was a clear rejection of Zainab by the other women because her husband was associated with ISIS. The facilitators worked to ease indirect tensions by creating small groups, um, by creating uh, small groups during the, the training and placing Zainab within a group uh, uh, of women from the host community. Zainab was initially um, apprehensive and hesitant due to the reactions of the other women during the session. However, uh, through the other sessions and working in small groups all together with the other women, things started to improve, especially the sessions that entitled violence 
stereotyping and empathy had a significant impact on influencing the women, which contributed to Zainab's acceptance by the rest of the women, and they became Zainab's colleagues and friends at the end of all the sessions. After completing the UCP sessions and forming the first volunteer peace team, women peace team in Gayara sub-district, Zainab became an active member of the women peace team, despite the community in South Mosul generally rejecting the idea of women being a free and decision maker in society. However, Zainab defied all these obstacles and continued to serve her community and her family with determination. So I would like to share with you a quote of Zainab when she said, I used to, to feel lowly discriminated against and marginalized, and I was exploited by others because of my husband's association or affiliation with ISIS. I was unable to go out of my house out of fear of the community. But now I am more aware than ever before, and I have overcome my fears. I have obtained civil documents for myself and my children, and I have become an advocate for my rights with the government institutions in the area. Furthermore, Zainab, along with her colleagues, the team, uh, began participating in events and activities in her community, such as conducting awareness sessions for women on violence and online blackmailing. She also took part in the shopping festival to support women with handmade crafts. This, is, this, was, the this was the first festival uh, of its kind in South Mosul, attended by security actors, stakeholders, and officials from the government and the community. Many people or many women, including returnees, displaced, and host community members participated uh, extensively in, in, in that festival. The goal of the festival was to strengthen social cohesion and peaceful coexistence among the community members. However, this sparked outrage in the community with someone spreading rumors on Facebook uh, that Zainab was holding extremist belief stating that, oh, ISIS women are starting to engage with our families under the protest of awareness and community service. And we categorically reject this because they hold extremist belief. However, many of the comments on the post were positive and rejected this incitement against this group of women, including Zainab. This indicates that the community outlook and behavior are changing positively due to the awareness, the training, capacity strengthening, relationship building, and trust that MP built within the community. Overall, there has been a change and acceptance of women peace team and women like Zainab by the community, which has enhanced peaceful coexistence and the growing role of women in society, protecting them from violence and exploitation. Many community and government uh, leaders express their gratitude of MP for its initiative to strengthen women in the community. Now, Zainab is an active member of the community and her life has changed for the better because of the UCP trainings and the strategies that MP provided for her and the other women in the community. This is my story. I hope uh, it in inspired you. So I will leave uh, my colleague, uh, Nurhan, to tell her story. Thank you, Yunus. Um, uh, before sharing my story, I just want uh, to explain. Um, I'll be talking about two towns in Iraq, uh, Sinjar and Ba'aj. Uh, Ba'aj is a town that um, Arabs, Muslim Arabs live in while Sinjar is a town where Yazidis live in it. Yazidis are, um, Yazidism, for those who don't know, is a pre-Abrahamic uh, ancient faith and is one of the religious minorities in Iraq. So um, now that you know about Sinjar and Ba'aj, I want to share with you a story about a man, his name is Qasim. Qasim is a 35 year old man. Uh, he was born and raised in Sinjar. And in Sinjar, 
there are some Muslims, some Christians who used to live there. And Qasim told me they used to live peacefully. Nothing was going on. Life was good. Until 2014, when ISIS invaded Iraq. Unfortunately, Sinjar witnessed horrific human uh, violations targeting Yazidi communities. Um, Yazidis were brutally uh, persecuted. And as a result, Qasim felt it was time to save his family and himself, and he had to flee from Sinjar. But unfortunately, Qasim comes from a very poor family. And he, he comes from a very big family. There are like 18 members in, in this family and they don't have a car. So they had to flee to the mountains walking and the journey took them nine hours until they managed to reach the mountains. Luckily they managed to flee and they remained in the mountains for a week. Qasim shared with me that um, the, stay, the, the week that he stayed in the mountains was very traumatic. They had to flee with just whatever they could get, just a few bottles of water and bread. And he told me I'll never, like kids were screaming, they were hungry. People were exhausted because of the heat. It was during summer and the summer in Iraq is very unbearable. The heat is very strong. And um, he told me that um, he witnessed uh, people died who died in the mountains because they couldn't survive the weather. Children were screaming, begging for food, but he was helpless like other men because they just couldn't leave the mountains because if they did, they would be killed instantly by ISIS. Eventually, Qasim and his family and the other families managed to leave the mountains and entered uh, Duhuk, which is an uh, area in uh, the Kurdistan uh, region of Iraq. Qasim lived in Kurdistan in uh, Duhuk uh, for um, seven years. And after the liberation of uh, Iraq from ISIS, he decided to go back with his family to Sanjar. But of course his house was demolished along with the whole neighborhood. So he went and rented a house in a small village called Kahtaniya. This village belongs to Baaj town, which is full of Muslims and Arabs. Although the Kahtaniya all the population are Yazidis, like those who are in Sinjar, but um, they were, they belong to Baj. It's geographically, it belongs to Baj. I remember uh, Qasim shared with me, um, and I can quote him, he said, I was lucky. I wasn't killed. My family were safe. But that doesn't mean that there isn't a heartache inside of me and that I'm living with this anger inside of me because I'll never forget what happened in the mountains, the kids who were screaming out of hunger, those who died because of the weather. I'll never forget my best friend who wasn't lucky enough to flee and he got killed just because he was a Yazidi. I'll never forget my best friend and his wife, um, his wife who was raped, kidnapped and was sold as a slave. And unfortunately, it's not just my best friend and his wife. It's thousands of Yazidi young boys and men who were killed just because they were Yazidis and young girls and women uh, who were raped and kidnapped and were sold as slaves just because they were Yazidis. And he told me, I believe you can imagine and understand why I wouldn't want to deal with anyone who is Muslim. I didn't want, um, I thought, especially those who are from Bahaj because they're very close to us. I thought that they were all supporting ISIS. They were okay with everything that happened with us. And we decided to just stay away from them. Just us Yazidis stick together and we don't wanna engage with them anymore. I don't wanna talk to them. I don't wanna see them. And definitely I wouldn't want to go and step a foot in Baj. Qasim told me, a friend of him told him there's an organization called MP in Sinjar that are doing a lot of activities and, and, and implementing trainings and doing lots of stuff for the Yazidi community. And he encouraged him to join and he did. And he shared his experience that it was very, um, it was um, something completely different. First, he was introduced to something called unarmed civilian protection, which for him was something completely new. 
And he felt like it was something very nice that the Yadidi community are brought up together. They are um, learning new, new stuff and new things. And after finishing the training of the UCP with NP, NP approached Qasim and told him that they are planning on organizing a football tournament. And they asked Qasim and his friends, would you like to join? And of course, they were very excited. Yes, we would love to. But then NP staff told them, of course, we'd love to have you, but you need to know that we will, we will be organizing, organizing this tournament with the NP office in Baj. And then uh, Qasim was like, um, I'm not sure. Why would we? Why don't we do it here? And after several discussions with MP staff, they were convinced that they can give it a try and go. And I asked Bashi, uh, I asked, I'm sorry, Qasim. I asked Qasim what actually um, made you uh, go? What really convinced you? And he told me that he remembers there was a, an activity that he took during the UCP training that was talking about unity and that how when people are united are strong and are supported. And that's what a community should be. And he said, I'm an Iraqi citizen, just like anyone, but because of the traumatic experience that us Yazidis have been through, we just can't live our life normally like others. For instance, if I need gas and Kahtaneya, I can't find gas to buy. Instead of going to Baaj, which is like 12 minutes away from me, I would rather go to Sinjar, which would be 25 minutes or 30 minutes away, just so that I would go and deal with Yazidis, but not deal with the Arab community and the Muslim community. I didn't feel I was free. I feel like I'm not like the others. And I want to, and I want to end that, but I just don't think I can let go of what happened in the past. But he decided that he would give it a try and join, especially that he knew that NP staff from Sinjar as I've mentioned before, every field site, the staff are from the community. So NP staff from Sinjar who are Yazidis and the internationals who are there are gonna be with him and the rest of the youth team when they go to Baj. So he said that I was sure that I would be safe. We are not going alone. We're not gonna be by ourselves. We have NP, which is an international organization. We will, we will feel safe as long as they are there. And they went. And I asked uh, Qasim, uh, how was, what did he feel and what were his expectations? And he was saying that he was very anxious and he was very worried that he would be triggered when he goes there. And that he was worried that a fight could happen. Someone can say something that would upset him or upset someone from his community. And he was very anxious. But when he reached Baj, he was very surprised to see that the staff from MP, who are Yazidis, just like him, were greeting the staff from Baj, who are Muslim and Sunnis, hugging each other, talking, laughing. And he was like, it seems like they're like friends. There's a relationship. And that, that felt weird for a second for him. And then he found the people from Baj not waiting for them to approach them. And they just went. And hi, we're very happy to have you here in our, in our town. I'm very excited that we're going to have this football tournament together. And he told me like they were very friendly, they were very welcoming, and they were very understanding. They understood our pain, they understand where we're coming from, and it looked like we misjudged them. And for sure from what I saw, that they are not ISIS. They're just normal, normal people who just want to live in peace just like us. And it's just because of fear that and, and the judgment that we had because of everything we've went through, we assumed everyone from Baj would be ISIS and everyone from Baj would be um, uh, supporting ISIS and, and are okay and agree with everything that happened with the Yazidis. And as you can see on the screen here, here are the Sinjar and Baj uh, team in the football tournament. Kassim told me that um, I was scared that was a, a fight would happen and I was actually right, there was a fight, but the only fight that happened was that the Baj uh, team were fighting that they are not gonna allow us to leave Baj unless we go home with them and have dinner so that they can introduce us to their families. And now Bashir has two best friends from Baj, 
not just Bashir. I don't know why I keep saying Bashir, but his name is Qasim. I'm really sorry. Um, <laughs> Qasim has two best friends from Baaz, and um, it's not just him. His other friends, they exchange number with people from Baaz, and now he says, I will never forget that they told us we are like your brothers. We are one. We are the same community. We both suffered from ISIS. And we hope that we can live our life in peace from now on. And um, Qasim now goes to Baj by himself. He does. He told me, I don't need NP anymore. I have two best friends there. I, have, I go to them all the time. They come and visit me. If I need something, I call them immediately. And uh, as I can quote Qasim's words, uh, I have to give the credit to MP. Um, we wanted this, we hoped for this, but never in a million years I've ever thought that this could ever happen. And because MP pushed us and encouraged us and made us feel safe that we can take the step, we realized that when we were both in the same room, communicating, talking together, that everything we thought was not true. Not everyone from Baaj is ISIS. Not everyone in Baaj supports what happened to the Yazidis. Um, and that was my story. Thank you for uh, listening. And um, thank you. Thank you so much, Nurhan and Yunus. We really, really appreciate the stories. And I think they just exemplify how building community leads to a greater sense of safety and community when we feel like we belong and we're not living with that um, overwhelming sense of fear. So really appreciate your work. Um, I would encourage folks, if you have questions, you can go ahead and put them in the chat. I was just wondering if you would want to say a couple things about some of the challenges that you face. We love the success stories, but we know you work in really hard environments too. So if you could just speak to some of the challenges, that would be wonderful. Yeah, um, thank you very much. Um, to be realistic and honest with uh, with you all that of course in every uh, work, there are some challenges. So uh, one of the challenges that we face uh, during our work is that sometimes funding uh, priorities uh, shift within the large governmental agencies where we receive most of our, of our funding. For example, many European countries have increased funding to places like Ukraine, while the, the decreasing it in, in Africa and the Middle East. And sometimes we have to, to adjust how much programming uh, uh, or how many places we can work in, in a country because of this. And this is why uh, support from individuals like you is, is so important because it can make it possible for us to uh, decrease our reliance uh, on the such a big impact on uh, uh, organizations like ours. So, so sometimes our um, our funding is is pending or because the shifts of the funding or priorities to other countries. Uh, so this is one of the challenges and an example. Uh, in, in Zumar, uh, we uh, started uh, a project for uh, a period of time, then uh, the, the fund stopped uh, and the priority went to another, uh, uh, another countries. Then we resume the work. So when we resume our work, we still have a relationship or uh, a strong relationship and trust in the community, but we have to, to go back a little bit to reinforce this, uh, this relationship and uh, uh, trust with the community. So we need uh, uh, working with community about social cohesion and peaceful coexistence and uh, reducing violence. Uh, it, it needs a lot, a long time to uh, uh, to be achieved. So we want to continue by the support of you and uh, uh, other agency to continue that work. So this is one of the challenges that we face in uh, our site. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Because our goal is breaking the cycle of violence and contribute into sustainable peace building and sustainable co social cohesion within the community. And we're not saying that MP is like bringing something new into the table for the community or like, and also for the inclusion of women. It's not like women are not empowered and MP is empowering them or that the youth uh, are lost 
No, the youth in Iraq, they have a lot of potential. Women are really empowered and strong. People really do want peace. The goal and the objective that we want is just that we push people and, and show them that we believe in them. And that's our goal is that there is a potential and it's already there. And this is our role is that we just give them the opportunity. We show them that we are there for them. We are supporting this. And of course it takes time. Um, even if we created community protection teams in different field sites, we do have women protection team, we have female youth protection teams, youth protection teams, and children protection teams as well, peace teams. Those, all those peace teams are there so that the community doesn't depend and rely on us or any other organization. And that's the rule. We want advocates for you for, for UCP to go on, even if MP is not there. And that could happen not over a night, it takes time. And even if we managed and we succeeded in achieving those community peace teams, we still need the community itself to accept them. Just like my colleague Eunice was sharing, we have women protection, we have women peace team and they are doing amazing work, but the society is still not there yet. They're not still accepting this idea. And that's the work we need to do and it takes us time. And that's why we do need the support so that we can keep on continuing this this work. Hope that answered your question. Yeah, thank you. We do have time for one question. If anybody has one, want to put it in the, the chat. If not, I have a, a question. Just I would be curious to know what what keeps you going and doing this work and and working for for sustainable peace well um what keeps me going personally is that um maybe we don't see every day huge impact and big steps but every single day of my work i see an impact that happen happening within an individual within one person and what I know, if it happened with one person, that means this person has a family. So it goes there. And those families, they do know other families. And this person have friends. And the circle keeps on going, growing and growing. And if the impact is slow, that's that's when you know really there is a real and, and sustainable impact that is going on. And this is what actually motivates me the most. And um, I get amazed by all the people that I meet, just like Zainab in Yuna's story, just like Kasim in my story. They are the ones who keep us going. Thank you. Yunus, yeah. how would you? Um, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, for uh, your question, so of course, um, as Norhan said, sometimes we cannot see impact immediately and sometimes it needs time. And sometimes they, the impact will be on one individual and on a group of people. But what motivates me uh, to stay with the MP is and, and to work with those people is that MP is a unique using the the uh, with the using of the UCP strategies, the very good relationship that MP built and trust with the community. So um, uh, MP for me, from my point of view, is different from other NGOs because. Uh, it's it's really uh, build build uh, relationship and trust with the community. Unless you play, build a very strong relation with the community, you will not get the accept acceptance by the community. That's why we see a lot of acceptance by the community. Uh, we as national and international staff, we are invited to to houses and we are participating in their uh, daily life and we are sharing their festivals. We are sharing their uh, uh, personal occasions. And uh, these these things, when you see people just saying MP MP MP, and when when they need MP MP is ready to do so, it's not just like okay we will help you. Let's see. No, we don't promise. So this this is the good thing that make people love us so much. And I see that MP is unique with the UCP, especially is unique. So I I, I can't يعني, uh, describe all of that, but this idea came to my mind. This is my motivation and uh, make me keep working with MP. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. We have a question in the chat about how how do we know, how will you know when nonviolent peace force work is in Iraq is done? Um, 
I would say when there are many, many factors that would cause violence, but because the community is very united, it won't happen. And that's when, again, that's why it's very important to us to create the community peace teams so that we have advocates from the community for the UCP. We have people from the community who actually believe in it and are spreading this within their community. It's like a peer to peer with their friends, with their families, with their relatives. And, um, and it's, hap it, it's gonna take time, but I, I'm, I'm really hoping and I believe it could happen because as again, as I was saying, I'm seeing lots of impact individually on, on very small scale, but that doesn't mean that it's not gonna happen one day on a big scale, it just needs time. Thank you. Eunice, would you, do you have a, a, anything to add to that? No, 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 thank you. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have a question by um, Ahmed. Um, let's see, do we, uh, I can go ahead and unmute you or if, you, or if you'd prefer to, I'll, I'll go ahead and unmute you if you'd like to ask. I, I, Ahmed, did you have a question? Okay, I don't know if that feature is working. I think the, the easiest way to ask a question is to put it into, into the chat. Um, I think we're gonna go ahead. I, I, we wanna introduce one more person um, to you this more, today. Um, and that is uh, Thor Wagstrom. Thor has been a longtime volunteer, a trainer on UCP, and um, just a great supporter for, for many years. And we'd like him to um, just uh, share a couple words. Thor? Thank you, everyone, for joining us today and for supporting Nonviolent Peace Force. My name is Thor Wagstrom and I have been part of Nonviolent Peace Force since 2011. Uh, when I learned that there was an organization already doing the kind of nonviolent security work that I had been pondering for years, I knew I had to help spread the word and build support for unarmed civilian protection. I've done this through local fundraising and outreach campaigns and then later through developing and sharing training curriculum. In fact, I've worked with some of the fine NP team in Iraq during some of those sessions. Another way that I have participated in the work of NP is by making a modest monthly donation. And I would like to invite you to consider what you might be able to do to help carry the burden of running an international nonprofit organization. This year, it will take 27 million dollars to fully fund our mission. Most of that is covered by government grants and contracts, but every year we face a gap that we must close to keep all of this safety and peace work in the communities going. NP fills that gap with the support of you and others like you. Thank you, we cannot do this alone. We cannot do this without you. Thank you, Thor, and thank you, everybody, for being here today and for uh, your participation and for learning more about our work and considering um, a, support, uh, a gift before the year end. We really appreciate it. If you have other questions that um, you'd like to ask, feel free to send it to the inf info at nonviolentpeaceforce.com. We will be able to connect with you. We also have uh, the link for making a donation on the chat. So please use that as well. If that's easier than sending a check. Um, and just really wanna um, thank you so much for believing in this mission. It is uh, an honor to work here and it's honor to know all of you and to know that we are together uh, building a more a peaceful world. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for um, taking the time and being here with us. And we were very excited um, to be sharing with you our work. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your attentive listening. And we're happy 
to have this uh, cafe with you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Bye.